Hello everyone, I am so happy to see you again. Today I want to share with you some recipes for a Sunday brunch. Here's the menu. I'm serving a cheesy and delicious tater tot breakfast casserole, homemade maple granola with organic dried fruit and yogurt, a colorful fruit salad brightened with lime zest and lime juice, and store-bought croissants with whipped honey butter. For beverages, I'm offering homemade cold-brewed coffee plus orange juice and Prosecco. This particular brunch is extremely easy on the cook. All of the dishes can be prepared well ahead of time. So this tater tot breakfast casserole is almost too easy to make. First thing I need to do is lightly grease my baking dish, which is roughly 9 inches by 13 inches. Then we need a 32 ounce or 907 gram bag of frozen tater tots. And these go directly into the baking dish. And then in a large bowl, I need to beat 12 large eggs. If you have a garden, you can certainly save your eggshells and either compost them or just spread them in the garden. Whisk. The spiral whisk is great for beating eggs. Then I want to whisk in a pinch of salt, some grinds of black pepper, a large handful or about one cup of extra sharp cheddar cheese and the same amount of Monterey Jack cheese. I also want a half cup or 118 mils of whole milk and just mix. And then pour the egg mixture directly over the tater tots. I'm going to cover this and refrigerate it overnight and then tomorrow before we bake it off for brunch I will top it with some already cooked strips of bacon and I will give you the baking directions tomorrow. I'm going to clean up my workstation and then I need to grab some ingredients at Tierra Farm. I think we will also stop by the local flower store. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? I love Tierra Farm. It has the best organic fair trade coffee, tea, dried fruit, and nuts. The store is only four minutes from my home, but you can shop there too. Tierra ships nationally within the United States. I can put a free shipping code in the description below if you are interested. For the cold brewed coffee, I'm selecting beans from Ethiopia. Coarsely ground coffee beans 
provide more surface area for the cold brew process. Change of plan. Instead of visiting the flower shop, I drove to Samascot Garden Market in Kinderhook, New York. Here I found two gorgeous pink Martha Washington Pelargoniums. I think these will look well on our brunch table. Oh, we are home again. And let me tell you, it is really hot outside. The air is thick with humidity. So here's the coffee that you and I bought at Tierra Farm. It's Ethiopian. It's a light roast, which means it's going to have a lot of caffeine. And I'm going to use this for cold brew coffee. Cold brew coffee is really my favorite coffee. It has very low acidity. It just has a really smooth taste. So what I have here is about nine cups of cold water. I'm making a double recipe. And then I need two cups of the coarsely ground coffee. Give this a quick stir. Just to moisten all of the coffee. Then I will cover this and let it sit either on the counter or in the refrigerator for 8 to 12 hours. During that time, the coffee will develop this very rich chocolatey aroma. I'm going to cover this with a plate. And now on to the granola, which I'm going to serve parfait style. In other words, I will layer the granola with yogurt in a bowl. And for the granola, I need four cups or about 360 grams of the rolled oats. I love that these bags are compostable. Then I need about one cup of sunflower seeds. You do not have to be exact here. One cup or thereabouts of sliced almonds. One cup or thereabouts of shredded unsweetened coconut. Then I want to add some hazelnuts. I think hazelnuts are wonderful in granola. And again, about one cup. One and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. three-fourths cup or about 177 mils of either avocado oil or coconut oil. I'm using avocado oil today. And one-third cup or about 79 mLs of pure maple syrup. I'm just going to eyeball this. And stir. Many of you have asked about the wooden utensils that I use. These are called spurtles. And I can link them in the description below if you are interested. They are not expensive. I actually put mine in the dishwasher. They're great for stirring and for mixing. I use them in place of spatulas. Now, I will add some dried fruit to this, but not until after the granola has baked. I need my baking sheet, which I have lined with parchment. You don't have to. 
pour this out. And then this goes into a preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius oven until the granola crisps and browns. That's going to take about 30 minutes. And after 15 minutes or so, I will retrieve the granola and give it a toss. This looks just perfect. It's a nice golden color. It's very fragrant. Beautiful. I'm going to let this cool for about 20 minutes and then I will transfer this mixture to a bowl and let it cool completely overnight. Well, we did a lot of recipes today in just a short time. We made the tater tot casserole, we made the cold brewed coffee, we made the granola. Now, tomorrow I'm going to make a fruit salad, create the parfait with the granola and yogurt, and I think I'm going to add some croissant and some honey butter, some whipped honey butter to our brunch. So I will see you tomorrow. Sweet dreams, friends. Good morning. It's a new day and mercifully we had a break in the weather. It was so hot and sticky yesterday. Last night we had a torrential downpour and that was it. The weather cooled off. So we can have our brunch party outdoors today. And the first thing I need to do is strain this cold brewed coffee that you and I made together yesterday. So I have a strainer over a bowl and I have a flour sack towel I'm going to put inside the strainer and I just ladle the brew right on top. Okay, we can set these aside. And then I'm going to transfer this to a clear glass pitcher. Of course, this coffee is very concentrated, meaning it's very strong. So no problem if you want to dilute the brew with ice cubes, which is probably what I will do. I will serve iced coffee for this brunch. So next, we need to make a fruit salad, which I'm going to dress with lime juice and lemon zest. I think a fruit salad is always welcome at a brunch party. For this salad, I'm going to use strawberries because they are in season, and some green seedless grapes, and some blueberries, and this pineapple over here. Now the great thing about hosting a Sunday brunch is you really don't have to hurry things. You can start, as I did, preparing for it a day or two ahead of time. And then you can be fresh and relaxed when your guests arrive. So I have one pound of strawberries here, and then I need probably a good cup or so of these seedless green grapes, which unfortunately I will have to cut in half. On to the pineapple. Now, I have not cut one of these things in many years, so we will see how it goes. See if I remember how to do it. 
off with the top. I think you can stick this in potting soil and grow a whole new pineapple plant. Trim off the end and then cut right down the middle. Then there is a tough core right here and we want to slice on either side of the core. This is really too hard to cut for a fruit salad, but I do know a lot of people who like to chew on the core. Cut this through the middle and then at this point, I cut the pineapple lengthwise into thirds, taking care not to cut all the way through the rind. Then I make crosswise cuts. Lastly, I run my knife between the rind and the flesh to release the pineapple cubes. There we are. We have cubed pineapple. Now I was going to add some kiwi to this, but I already have a green color from the seedless grapes. So I think we will skip the kiwi today. So this container is the perfect size for serving, but it is definitely too small for tossing. So I'm gonna throw these into a larger bowl, and then we can go about making our lime dressing. Lime zest. I think the zest of one lime will be enough now we need the juice. Now a viewer told me that if I were to cut off this little knob from a lemon or a lime and then place it in my lime or lemon juicer, I would achieve a lot more juice. Let's see if that's true. I think it is true. So thank you for that tip. And if you wanted to forego lemon or lime juice altogether, you could simply serve this fruit salad, as I sometimes do, simply mixed with champagne or Prosecco. Let's give this a toss. Spurtles are great for mixing fruit salad. This is very colorful. I can't imagine anyone being able to resist this fruit salad. One little taste. Sweet fruit with that zippy lime juice, perfection. All I have to do now is cover this salad and pop it into the refrigerator. Since my breakfast casserole did not contain any bread, in fact, there's no bread in any of these recipes, I thought it would be fun to serve croissant. I let the supermarket help me out here. But to make these uniquely wonderful, I'm going to whip up some honey butter. And I'm going to whip this mixture in my stand mixer. And I wanted to mention that I recently bought, well, let me show you, some new attachments. Actually, they are replacement attachments. The paddle attachment that comes with the KitchenAid is metal and it's coated with something. But that something was all peeling off, so I bought an all stainless steel paddle and I did the same with the whisk attachment. Stainless steel is the way to go. I don't know how much butter I wish to make. Maybe I will do half of this block right here. I'll start whipping this. Might as well do the whole package here. 
And then I add honey. Yum. So I have arranged these croissants on a platter and then I have a little bowl in the center. Just for looks, I'm going to add a little drizzle of honey to the top of the butter. And our brunch is pretty much complete. All I have to do now is preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius, and then pop the breakfast casserole in. I just remembered I still need to arrange the granola parfait, but that will take a matter of seconds. So let's take a break and head outside to arrange the table. Now that the table is mostly set, we can pop this tater tot breakfast casserole into the oven. It will need 40 to 45 minutes to bake. Then we can build the granola parfait. I did taste of this granola last night. It was really hard not to eat all of it, okay? Super delicious. Homemade granola is the best granola. So I'm going to start with a layer of the yogurt that you and I bought together yesterday. This is just plain yogurt. Trying to stay tidy here. A layer of the granola. Oh, I forgot, I wanted to add some dried berries to this just for color and also for additional flavor and fiber. So this is the organic very berry mix. What's in here? Everything is organic. We have raisins, dried blueberries, dried cranberries, dried goji berries, mulberries, and blueberries. healthy and appetizing. What more can we ask for? Of course, we need something with which to spoon this parfait into these little bowls. These are the blue willow bowls that I bought online. So I will add the bowls and four spoons to the table. And of course, we need Prosecco and orange juice. So I have tucked my Prosecco into this silver urn, which you and I polished in a previous video. The Prosecco is already chilled. I just want to keep it cold. Now I have ice cubes in my little ice bucket here. They will be for the cold brewed coffee. Again, it's warm outside. I'm not going to serve hot coffee. With the iced coffee, I'm going to serve half and half but not directly from this carton. I'm going to pour it into a little pitcher. And then to keep the half and half cold, I'm going to surround it with ice cubes. 
And for those who want to combine champagne and orange juice for mimosas, I have the orange juice, which I will pour into a pitcher. And I think we are good to go. I just need to wait for the casserole to finish baking. The casserole is ready. Perfect timing because my guests are here. This puffed up beautifully. And it smells terrific. All I have to do now is garnish it with some already cooked bacon. So I'm going to cut this bacon into, oh, one inch pieces or so. And of course you do not have to add bacon to this casserole. Let's head outside. I have to try some of this tater tot breakfast casserole. Oh, this is really wonderful. And again, you could really play around with this recipe. You could add cooked sausage or cooked kielbasa to it. I think it's terrific, just as it is. And by the way, my guests do not want to be on camera, and that's fine. And of course, I want to try a bit of croissant with the honey butter. So delicious and so simple to do. It is starting to rain. So we are going to move the whole kit and caboodle indoors. But I hope you feel inspired to host your own brunch party. As you've just seen, all of these dishes were really easy to make and they were no trouble to make. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And I can put a couple of my other videos at the end of this one that you can watch between now and my next upload. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. <music>